Today's deck is all about Blaststone, and no, I ain't talking about my mama's face. The deck here is Colorless Eldrazi with Blaststone thrown in, and Colorless Eldrazi's kind of fallen off the radar for a while now. So the question is, can Blaststone save it? That's what we're gonna find out, and on the surface, it looks really strong. First of all, it runs four powders, and obviously with the new London Mulligan rule, being able to take free mulligans is pretty good, especially with Eternal Scourge, which we can cast from exile. But powder's main use is making sure we have a really good opening hand, usually meaning we have Chalice in the hand, and there are times when we can turn one Chalice with Simeon, or if we're on the draw, cast Caverns, which allows us to exile a card from hand, preferably Scourge. And then from there, it's all about hitting good lands like Eldrazi Temple and getting the big boys out as soon as possible. And in a modern metagame where so many things cost one, there are a lot of matchups where Chalice alone can pretty much win us the game. But let's say Chalice can't win us the game right away. Perhaps they have Aether Vial and it can get around Chalice. That's where Blast Zone comes in. Blast Zone comes into play, untap, it produces a colorless, and then we can pay double X to put X counters on it. And then for three mana, we can sacrifice Blast Zone to destroy all permanents with that converted mana cost. For a land with no draw box, it's really nice to have that as an option. The only real downside to Blast Zone, we pretty much need four lands out to sacrifice it. But in really grindy and long games, Blast Zone is very good. And then lastly, we have Dismembers, one Endbringer, three Mutavolts to Scavenger Grounds, four Graveyard Hate, and also a Seagate Wreckage. And there's also Cavern. You get the idea, on a sideboard. We have four Lightlands for Graveyard Hate, three Contortions for Creature Hate, Warping Well, which can exile a creature, counter a sorcery spell, you know, just stuff like that. And there's two Damping Spheres, good against Tron and Storm, two Spy Glasses to stop activated abilities, is basically Pithing Needle that does not get countered by Chalice. And then we have one Ratchet Bomb. Normally, Colossus Eldrazi runs three in the sideboard, but because we have Blast Zone main deck. I cut two Ratchets for two Torpor Orbs. So if the creature has entered the battlefield abilities, they don't happen. And that is the deck, so let's get to the gameplay. But first, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, because subscribing helps me figure out what people want to see. But without further ado, here's a gameplay, and I hope you enjoy. Opening hand is balls, but we can powder. Still balls, but we have another powder and a scourge, so we'll powder again and turn to chalice. Yeah, we'll keep. Birds of Paradise. Play land, pass back. And it's Devoted Company. This is going to be a very tough matchup. They don't have much in the deck that costs one besides birds, but I guess we chalice anyway. And back to opponent. Collected company. Oh boy. I think we're in trouble. With the Dusk Watch Recruiter and this, they can dig through the whole deck, get Ballista or whatever, and that'll be the game. So we'll put ourselves out of our misery and go to game two. Go on to game two. I'm bringing the spy glasses for activated abilities and all the stuff for creature removal, dumping this. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand's decent, but we have powder and scourge. So we shall powder. Spy glass is an option. Then where do we go from there? No creatures. I say we powder again. Hmm. I don't like this either. Mole. I don't like this either, Mole. All right, at least we have a temple. Bottoming whale and a land. Now let's see if our opponent has a better hand than ours. Blue. Oh, that's strange. We shall play Matter Reshaper. And let's see what this blue does. Devoted Druid. And back on our train, swing for three. And I wouldn't have bottomed their creature removal if I known that was coming. But oh well. We'll see if they have it. Reflector Mage. Sure. Sending that to exile. And opponent passes back to us. Thought Knot Seer. That's pretty good. But first, we'll swing for three. Opponent takes the three. We'll play Thought Knot. And they did have the combo in hand, but no payoff cards besides that. But that requires white. So we'll take that. And pass back to our opponent. Opponent plays Birds of Paradise, plays another druid, and maybe we should hit that land, but they have a second one in hand. Swing for seven. They take seven. And opponent pass back to us, but we'll do this. Last zone, as well as a dismember. Interesting, interesting. A lot of things we can do here, but I think the longer we wait, the better. This could get pretty big, but we could dismember it. So I say we play the matter reshaper this turn. Oh, Court of Calling. Getting Eldrazi Displacer. How dare they steal our deck? Dismember. Even though they could flicker that, bouncing one of our dudes, but they don't. All right. Opponent plays a land, passes back, and should we wipe them now? Now, we could play this this turn and then Endbringer next turn, but they're already at six life, so I say we'd be aggressive here. Let's blast on them. They buff their dudes once and then twice, but we have lethal, so I, I don't know what that was for. Hooray for the power of math. The only change for game three is I'm gonna get rid of one Mimics, put in a Gemstone Caverns, and with that, let's go to game three. Opening hand, one land, but we have a powder and a scourge, so we powder, and we can turn one Ratchet Bomb, but the rest of our hand is balls, so we'll powder again, and powder again, because we have scourge. Interesting, we have a Temple Caverns. Yeah, we'll keep playing that, exiling that. Birds of Paradise, so we be a douche and hit him now? Yeah. Yeah, it seems like fun. And oh, look at that. So we'll play a Scourge from Exile and pass back. The Zero Remedies. Now here's where things get grande. We can play the Smasher, which feels like the right play. We'll be tapping out, unable to play this, but I think that's fine because Druid comes into play tapped. So let's go with that. Smasher swinging for eight. They go to 11, back to them. And Knight of Autism. So they gain four life, sure. Only delaying the inevitable. And they swing for two. Meh. Back on our turn, another Smasher. Time to smash, just like I smashed your mama. Swing for 13, not quite lethal though, but if they make any of this color mana, it will be lethal. And there's the concede. I didn't think we were going to get that match. We have a lot less disruption than most decks, but our hand this game couldn't have been better. I mean, we had to 
powder three times for it but that's how the deck works so now on to the next one opening hand we got a scourge and a powder so we'll powder and ooh, we can turn one caverns into chalice yeah i like that and it looks like it's human oh, except vile gets around chalice oh well it'll at least slow them down a bit when it plays land passes back and we pull matter shaper so we'll do that now when it vials in the noble heart but chooses to put vial on two all right and they named th how how do they know how do they know we had thought not you think they would name the scourge uh oh nope they just named reality smasher all right well at the very least we can dismember this but for now let's swing in for three opponent takes the three and then back to them opponent fires the vial getting a mantis rider and an image that's no bueno so there's two mantis riders and two of these hoes oh no another one i think our sack has been fondled because there's no way we can come back from this so we're going to game two go on the game two and bring in the creature hate cards a ratchet bomb and two torpor orbs and because we're bringing in torpor orb i'm gonna get rid of three mimics and also four chalices because they have cavern and four vial and with that we're going to game two opening hand is muy grande so we'll keep starting off with a turn one matter shaper and back to opponent opponent plays the vial hopefully we'll get a chance to use blast on to wipe them but for now we'll play another matter shaper swing for three and back to opponent opponent plays the land passes back all right well we'll play thought not oh very dirty two reflector mages or whatever that is and a lieutenant well you gotta take the mage and then we'll swing in four six back to opponent opponent plays their one remaining reflector mage bouncing the thought not okay back on our turn we get a fifth land do we thought not or smasher they're already 10 life i guess we go with smasher and swing in for a nut load they throw out the lieutenant killing that that's fine powder comes out and back to opponent they're at two life opponent plays another lieutenant but passes back i say we make things interesting we can play the scourge this turn but then boost blast zone the two next turn wiping those out i think that's the right play so play the scourge and pass back what is these mantis rider sure they could deal five damage to us with the kessig in hand but i think we'll be okay opponent swings for three plays the kessig dropping them down to one i wonder if they know the blast zone queef is coming let's find out long pause here now time to wipe those two all right now swing in if they have a reflector mage though that could be a problem do you hold back we have to have the smash I think it's worth the trade. Yeah, another reflector. Erg. The so one will go to Jesus, but these two trade. I think that's an okay trade. I'll draw as you mimic battlefield. And opponent swings with the team. So as long as they don't hit anything with the horizon canopy, we should have it here. We shall see. And we actually got it. Okay. So Blast Zone actually did something that game. I'm happy about that. But now on to game three. Game three, no change to the sideboard. We have a powder, but we also have a torpor orb. Pretty good. So we'll keep it. We also have two temples. What is these? Island with no vial. Huh. They kept seven cards. Maybe their hands are really good. Like the kite self freebooter kind of good. What? What is this? madness we'll try it torpor orb if this hits though oh no more reflector mages for you no more thalia's lieutenant no more champion of the parish mm, but they have mantis rider we have dismember okay unfortunately the thought not seer's exile ability won't work with torpor but i still think that's the right move here we'll dismember right off the bat play the thought not seer and then next turn we can double mattery shaper oh but a phantasmal image okay okay and they have dismember Urg. i was kind of hoping for an easy victory here but it looks like that's not gonna happen all right at least we have the double mattery shaper one and two and back to them well up Opponent plays the freebooter, but Torpor Orb. And back to us. Eternal Scourge. The Thought Knot's really annoying. And we could just swing in, let them kill it, draw a card. Yeah, I see that. You yep. only a powder. That's like the worst thing we could hit. Okay, play the Scourge. And might as well dump our hand. And back to opponent. Opponent plays Whirler Rogue, but with the Torpor Orb, it's not that good. Normally, they'd get two tokens. So it's pretty much a 2 2 right now. Ooh, what they doing here? That very derpy dirt, because we can do this and this. Sometimes the Syndrome is strong with all of us. So we draw a card, get a Thought Knot Seer, play the Thought Knot Seer, and then swing for five. Opponent blocks like that and pass back. Opponent draws a card and this again okay opponent hits us for one and back on our turn blast zone that could be really good but for now i say we just push lethal i'm sure they'll block something but we'll see how it goes oh my god what and they take that oh okay i mean they could have gotten a second thought not i guess they're just trying to dig for an extra card so a lot of digging for both of us they hit a land we draw a land and we hit a ratchet bomb okay and then we play blast zone back to our opponent opponent plays deputy detention swings for one and with this much mana we can put blast zone up to four counters but i suppose the right amount is three yeah we'll also tap this and we pull another blast zone so we play the blast zone and back to opponent. Opponent plays Thalia's Lieutenant. Things for two. I think that's okay. So we take it and then move this blast zone up to three as well. And then move this up to two. And just remember, a very strange situation. I'm not used to the blast zone. It's giving us a lot of options. But I'm also hoping we'll draw a creature soon. Because wouldn't that be nice? Opponent swings for three, but I think we fire it now. Kill those two hoes. Oh, that also took out a torpor orb. I, 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 feel, I feel slow in the head now. Well, we could also fire a blast zone and get rid of our powders. Let her do that. All right, screw it. We'll take one. Like I said, the down syndrome is strong with all of us sometimes. My name is Reality Smasher. And back on our turn 
another land. Plays another vial. Swings for three. Sure. I think we move this up to two. All right. Wow. That, that, okay. Well, let's uh, play a land pass back. So far, losing the Torpor Orb hasn't hit us. I think it's because they know we have Blast Zone. They're keeping two cards in hand. Plays a land for turn. We got to start soaking up some of this damage. So we'll fire off Blast Zone. Taking out the Meddling Mage. We'll take one. And they pass back. Please, just a creature. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Okay. Back to our opponent. Go down to three. Please, a creature. Thank you. Thank you for a creature. And then we pass back. I mean, we kind of had to lose a Torpor Orb. Because if we are taking two extra damage each turn, we wouldn't be alive at this point. I'll place Reflector Mage. Sure. They bounce it to hand. And they swing for one. But obviously, we're going to fire Blast Zone. We're going to lose the powders. But they lose two creatures of their own. And Reshaper survives. They pass back. And Thought Not Seer. That will do. But I expect a Vile in response. Yep. Deputy Detention. That's fine. And we'll steal their Mantis Rider. And pass back to our opponent. And at their draw step, we'll fire off the Blast Zone. Giving back Thought Not Seer. Ah, oh, but they're Viling in response. Okay. Just the Thelly's Lieutenant. And nice. Back on our turn. Spatial Contortion. So for now, we'll just swing in for four. Play Mattery Shaper. And that Contortion should save us no matter what they play here. It's looking really good for us. What is these? Mantis Rider. Oh no, guys. They got us. He's swinging for the win. What are we going to do? <laughs> Not today, big boy. Not today. And finally, there is the win. Turn 16. What a marathon. So for sure, Blast Zone won us that one. I kind of made an oopsie and loosened the Torpor Orb, but if I didn't do that, we would have lost. So it worked out. And if it weren't for the Blast Zone, we wouldn't even have room for Torpor Orb in the sideboard anyway, because usually Color Seldrazi runs three Ratchet Bombs in sideboard. But with Blast Zone, we were able to cut two of those for Torpor Orbs. So I think Blast Zone did a good job there. But now on to the next one. Opening hand is balls, so we're going to mull. Oh, this is still balls and not the good kind. So we're going to mull. And we can turn him on Chalice, so we'll keep it. Bottom, bottom. And it could be Death Shadow. Please be Death Shadow. Please no discard. Mm -hmm. My Anus has been fondled and not in the good way. All right. Let's see how this goes. When it plays land, passes back. We'll play land, pass back to them. When it plays a bobble. And it's definitely a Death Shadow deck. Is this the Angler? Yep. But too bad. And oh, look, we have Chalice. So we'll play the Chalice and see which of us can queef first. <laughs> what a loser. <laughs> trying to Death Shadow with Chalice out. What a silly willy. Oh, wait, unless they're trying to put stuff in graveyard. Oh, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're putting stuff in graveyard. Oh, we can't play anything, but I guess we'll just play the Simeons because we'll name Ape. Gotta say, I've never done that before. And then pass back. What is this? Another angler? Indeed it is. Full scavenger grounds. It's a little late for that. So instead, we'll play another Simeon and then pass back. Opponent swings for five. Sure. And back in our turn, we'll swing back at them for four and then play a mimic and then back to them. Opponent swings for five. Yeah. They could team our battle rage for 10, but we'd still be at one. Ooh, did not want to see that. This is not Muy Grande. So I think what we got to do here swing for four. Opponent dismembers. Okay. And then back to our opponent. Opponent swings if they have the battle rage. That's eight damage even if we block. So I guess just no blocks. Oh no. This is no bueno. If I had known we weren't going to pull a creature, it would have been boosting Blast Zone up to seven. But oh well. Opponent swings enemy chump block. And now put some counters on. Scourge. But instead of swinging for three, I think the better option is to hold back because they could play a Snapcaster and Devil Swing next turn. So we got to be defensive here. And no attacks from our opponent. Okay. So Blast Zone up to two more. And then they concede. All right. I was worried we were going to lose there because of the Blast Zone because I missed pumping it once or twice. But all's well that ends well. Go on in the game too. And I bring in three Ley Lines for all the Devil stuff and Snapcaster. One Rash Bomb for the Shadows and then dump this. Actually, wait, we need one of these. We'll, we'll dump one more of those. Now on to game three. Opening hand is very strong. Ley Line Temple. Yeah, we keep this. And opponent starts off with Visions. And oh, look at that. Oh, this is going so well. The one Temple this turn. Next turn, we'll play the Thought Knot. Jace, sure. That ain't going to flip. And now we'll play the Thought. Interesting. Interesting. Definitely take the Dismember though. Snapcaster can't do much without a graveyard. They cycle. Oh, Fatal Push. Fine. I suppose it's like my mama always says. It ain't over till the fat lady starts. Back in our turn. Urge. And we could dismember that, but we'll just pass back. They draw and discard. Jace, the Mind Sculptor. Okay. We should probably kill Jace's turn, so we'll clear a path. Dismember the Jace. Swing for three. And then back to our opponent. Opponent Thought seizes us. Uh, take that. And then they Visions. And ooh, a Death Shadow. That's pretty good. Ah, oh, dismember. All right, let's hold back to block. They might actually get us. They swing. We'll chump. But even then, dismember can't do anything. Urgh, they make it a 9-9. Yeah, all right. Oh, oh, so close. Mm, they could have Battle Rage. I don't know. Let's attack, I guess. I was kind of hoping to play defensively until Blast Zone came out, making that an 11-11. Shoot, shoot. No, they have us. Okay, that's why. I, uh, so they probably had it last turn, which means we had to block with the Scourge. And that'll be lethal. So yeah, they got us. Okay. Go on in the game three. I'm going to get rid of one of these for an extra one of these. And with that, let's go to game three. Opening hand. This is a tough one. No Ley Line. But a turn two Chalice, they'll probably discard us. But even if they do, we have a turn two Shaper, as well as this member. Ugh, this is tough. I know I'm going to regret this, but we're going to mull. Yes, yes, that was the right move. We just might be saved. Mutavolt, Spirit Guide. Turn one Chalice. Hooray for aggressive mulligans. When it bobbles, plays that tap. That probably means they don't have a Colgan or Death Shadow in hand, because otherwise they'd probably be a little more aggressive in getting the Shadow out. And for now, let's swing in with the Mutavolt. They go to 17, back to them. They pass back into another Chalice. Interesting, interesting. But I think the smart move here, Semen Powder. So we're guaranteed to play the Thought next turn. And then pass back. And ooh, and a Braid. We could have played the Chalice last turn. Uh-oh. And man, our 
balls just got slapped. We take the thought not, but at least we have the chalice again. So we shall powder and then chalice again. And back to our opponent. Opponent cycles. And passes back. But at this point, even if they do play the shadow somehow, we have blast zone. We pull eternal scourge, sure. And then swing for two. What is these? Oh. Okay, okay. That's pretty good. There's still hope for them. We might lose. Visions. Visions again. And an angler. Back on our turn. Another chalice. Yes. The magic gods might be on our side after all. And now we pass back. And a J. So no. They send the scourge to exile. We take five. Back on our turn. Cavern. We'll use that to cast this again. And we could take a risk and hit that. They might be out of basics. Yeah, shadow usually only runs one of that and one of that. So I say we go for it. Hit this. Yeah, they're out. So no more Colgan's commands. Ooh, but Liliana. Ah, oh, that's going to be muy grande. Our scourge will not have a good time with that. We go down to 10. Ratchet bomb, but they have three, four, and seven. That's not ideal. But we'll play it. I think they got us here. And there's no real point playing the scourge either with this out. Oh, it swings for five again. And there is a land. Okay, they got us. Three chalices, but they're able to take out our thought not seer. It happens. Good news, big boys. After finishing recording those three matches, I played four more matches to get a better understanding of how the deck performs. And out of seven total matches, the deck had five wins and two losses. That's pretty good. The one other loss came to Jun. Chalice just wasn't very good against them, and they had things like Assassin's Trophy to take out our big dudes. But other than that, things were really good. There are a lot of things that cost one in modern right now. So Chalice did very well, Blast Zone did very well. And with most removal cards costing one, it's very hard to take out our big dudes. So overall, things are looking really good for Colorless Eldrazi. So I would call it a success. But that is all for now. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And as always, I hope you have a great day.